Yeah, not that hard to get 22 and a half sacks. No, not that hard at all. Uh, that's why no one has ever gotten more than 22 and a half sacks since they started tracking the statistic. Now, remember, it was 2001. Michael Strahan got there courtesy of Brett Favre, and I don't care what anyone will ever say about it. That was a gift sack for Michael Strahan to let him break the record, and it stood for 19 years now. Uh, who's the best bet? Chandler Jones or anyone else, the best bet to break the single season sack record if anyone is going to break it this year. Well, you know, I'm going with my Aggie, Mike. That's easy. Von Miller talked about breaking the record last year. Bradley Chubb unfortunately got hurt. Von only ended up with eight sacks in the new Broncos defense. I think he understands the defense better. Bradley Chubb's back. If he stays healthy, I think Von's going to have another monster year. He's only 31 years old, only two seasons he hasn't had. A double digit sacks. He's always around there. There's a lot of candidates for this. I mean, you look at Nick Bosa and Josh Allen and Joey Bosa, and uh, there's a ton of guys in the league. Chandler Jones is a great bet. I think he's a, one of the most underrated players in the NFL playing right now. I think he's got a shot to do it, but there is a reason that it hasn't been done since 2001. So I think it's probably not going to happen this year, but I'm going to say if it does happen, my, my money's going to be on Von Miller to get it done. Well, and Von Miller was a fascinating case study last year of what happens when you have a new defense, when your partner on the other side, Bradley Chubb, who had a phenomenal rookie year for the Broncos in 2018, isn't there because of a torn ACL, and you're just pressing. There was a sense last year that as each game went by without Von Miller getting the sacks that he was trying to get, he got more frustrated. And I just like a golfer who keeps having bad round after bad round after bad round. It just snowballs. It gets inside your head. And the thing about trying to get a sack, you get close to a sack all the time. There really is an element of luck, right? A great pass rusher is around the quarterback a lot. Sometimes your teammate is the one who gets the sack. Sometimes the guy just gets rid of the ball in time. Something else happens. But you get close to getting the sack a lot. But, but, but things have to fall your way to get that sack. And, and I think that's what is one of the key ingredients for setting the record, Shireen. You have to be able to, to get lucky. You can do everything right, and if you're just not lucky, you're going to have 12 or 13 sacks, even though if you'd been lucky, you could have had 25. Or have Brett Favre take a dive. I mean, it's too yeah, bad it's- Brett Favre's not around. <laughs> they might have more, right? <laughs> What, what Von Miller needs to do is befriend multiple quarterbacks, pr- preferably in the division, yeah. so he plays them twice per year. I don't think Patrick Mahomes is going to go along with it, but make some friends, send them, send, send them some – I don't know what he does with his chickens. I assume that, you know, they, whether it's eggs or whether it's chicken meat, either way, he's got his chicken farm. Do something. Suck up to the quarterbacks you're going to play, especially if you start racking up the sacks. Look at the schedule and, and try to make some friends with somebody who you're going to be playing late in the season. All right. Who winds up with the career wait, was that, passing was that touch? Your, wait, was that your guess too? I, I mean, did you say Von Miller or are you saying somebody else? Uh, you know, I'm on a big Daniil Hunter kick just because I don't think he gets enough respect. PFT bingo. I think that's the lower right square, but in part because people can't pronounce his name, but also in part because he is just kind of a quiet, soft-spoken guy who has been in the shadows behind Everson Griffin in Minnesota. This is his year to come into his own, and I think that he could wreak havoc. Not that he's going to get 22 and a half, but I think he could be up there with the leaders this year. All right, who winds up? With the career passing touchdown record right now, Drew Brees and Tom Brady are neck and neck, sort of. Brees is at 547. Brady's at 541. Who's going to have it when it's all said and done? Well, Drew Brees considered retirement after last season. Tom Brady did not consider retirement after last season. As we said in the last segment, we're going to find out if Tom Brady has his legs still coming up this season with the weapons he has. But I love the weapons that he has. And I think he's going to have a lot of touchdowns this season. And, and I think he's going to continue his career. So I think he's going to outlast Drew Brees, which makes me think that Tom Brady's going to end up with the record. Although Brees might want to keep going uh, so that he beats Tom Brady in that record and retires with that record. But I'm going with Tom Brady in this one, just simply because I think he outlasts Drew Brees. I think he's going to play longer. I really do believe this is the last year for Drew Brees in New Orleans, uh, in part because he wants it to be and in part because 
others may want it to be who are in the organization. But you just get the sense that's the direction it's moving in. They want to see what they have in Taysom Hill. They want to move on. The deep ball isn't there. And he said some things interesting earlier this week about things he's done in the offseason to try to improve his deep ball. I just don't think it's something you can just work extra hard on. You either have it or you don't. So I agree with you. I think Tom Brady is going to last longer, and I don't think the gap is going to be so big that Brady won't be able to overcome it when uh, Breeze has retired. All right, Michael Thomas, who set the record last year for single-season receptions with 149. He has said he can break that record this year. So the over-under for Michael Thomas 149.5. Are you over or are you under? I'm absolutely under. I mean, we only saw the 149 last year for the first time ever. He had 125 the year before that. I mean, he's certainly capable of having a lot of catches. He's also had good injury luck, which we know can change. And we don't know how how long this season is going to last, how many games they're going to play. So there's a lot of factors to me that's going to keep that number under 149 this season. We also don't know about Drew Brees' arm, how much he has left uh, in it. Can he still get the ball to Michael Thomas? Or how much is Taysom Hill going to play? So there's a lot of questions to me uh, on on Michael Thomas and how many catches he's going to end up with. Look, he's one of the best receivers in football, and he's going to catch everything around him. But I think it's going to be under 149 and a half. Well, he's going to have that blazing red dot this year every time a defense gets ready to play him. The Vikings were able to neutralize him to a certain extent in the playoff game. That film is going to be instructive on defenses on how to shut him down. And Emmanuel, not that they, not that you can, how you, they can slow him down. Emmanuel Sanders is there now. He's going to get his share of balls. I just don't think it's a good idea to have one guy catching that many passes. You need to spread it around a little bit more. I'm going to go under, and I think it's better for the Saints if it is under, even though Michael Thomas, I still think, one of the finest receivers in the game. All right, last one. Best bet to be the first NFL 2,000-yard receiver. Last year, Amari Cooper told me with a straight face he was going for 2,000 yards. And look, this is the time of year where everybody has these superlatives, these lofty goals. Is there someone that can be the first one ever? Calvin Johnson did 1964 eight years ago. Is there someone who can get to 2,000? I think it's still a tough record <laughs> tough record to come by, and I don't think it's going to be done this year. But I think Michael Thomas is is probably the best bet to do that simply because he has so many chances. He gets so many balls, and, and he he gets yards off those balls. I mean, obviously, the more balls you have, the more yards you can come up with. And uh, when you look at him, he is the lead receiver on that team. He's going to get a lot of chances. They don't have a ton of weapons. When, when you look at DeAndre Hopkins and you look at all the weapons that Kyler Murray's going to have, I think they're going to spread the ball around. And I think DeAndre Hopkins' numbers might even come down uh, this year and, and Julio Jones obviously has Calvin Ridley as you guys discussed the number two receivers yesterday so uh, to me Michael Thomas is the number one guy the go-to guy is going to get a lot of receptions has a chance to get a lot of yards but I don't think it's going to be done if Calvin Johnson couldn't do it in his prime I, I can't imagine that there's anyone currently in the league who can get there especially when we consider that arbitrary, unrelenting possibility that any given Sunday or Monday or Thursday of the 16 games of the season, the guy who's on track to get to 2,000 yards can't play because he's on the COVID-19 list. So to me, that that's even if there was somebody who I thought had a chance to get to 2,000, I'd be nervous about saying that I really think it can be done because we don't know. We don't even know there's going to be a season. I, we hope there is, but 2,000 yards – You're not going to get 2,000 yards in 10 games. You're going to get 2,000 yards in 16 games. And uh, until we know there's going to be 16 games, it's impossible to even think about those kind of records. All right, let's take a break. Uh, Despite several conferences announcing their schedules, it wasn't all optimism this week for college football. We'll explain next where things stand as the college game possibly teeters on the brink. More PFT Live right after this. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.